was the night before Christmas. Well, <laughs> not really, don't panic. We've got a few days to go yet before Christmas. <clears throat> I better just say right at the start that I am Bishop Peter Fox. I am not Kurt Russell. Though, although appearances can be deceptive. It's a time of year, it's that time of year again, where wherever I go I get funny looks from the children. Um, because for some reason a lot of people seem to think I resemble that other bloke. I can't see it myself. <laughs> So I am Bishop Peter Fox and I'm coming to you from St Edward's Castle, Donington. And I am useless at this. I mean, where are the elves when you really need them? So, Father Christmas. There's a brief period at the end of each year, about four weeks, when I am more famous than the Beatles, or at least it feels like that. Because wherever I look, I see pictures of somebody who bears more than a passing resemblance, I, I think. Um, Father Christmas. It's not surprising. I've become a little bit of an expert on Father Christmas. I suppose you could say he is a kind of role model. Or should I say, no old model. <laughs> These are the joke. Oh, forget it. Anyway. I've been very interested in Father Christmas ever since I was, oh, as long back as I can remember, really, as small as you want to think about, time child. Um, Father Christmas is a very interesting personality, I think you have to agree. Unlike me, Father Christmas is very, very old. He's been known by all sorts of different names. I, I will always know him as Father Christmas because that's what I called him when I was a child. Back then, uh, it's what English people always call Father Christmas. These days, of course, a, a lot of people call him Santa or Santa Claus. That's, I suppose, because the Americans call him Santa, so <laughs> we all do these days. But he's been known by lots of different names at different times. He's known over um, in Europe as Santa Claus or St. Nicholas a lot of the time. Um, and indeed, if you were to go to certainly certain parts of Holland and some parts of France, uh, instead of getting Christmas presents delivered, put in your stocking by the fireplace on Christmas Eve, uh, as a child you'll put out your wooden shoes, your little wooden clogs, um, and Father Christmas, St. Nicholas, will put presents in your wooden shoes on the doorstep. On his birthday, the 6th of December, Feast of St. Nicholas. Here in England, of course, and most of the world, we're fairly familiar with the stockings by the fireplace routine. Father Christmas hasn't always looked quite the way he looks now. I mean, uh, for instance, if you were to go to some parts of Europe, especially Holland, Belgium, places like that, very often when you see Father Christmas, he's wearing his... Bishop's robes. St. Nicholas, you see, he has every right to wear Bishop's robes because he was the Bishop of Myra in Turkey. Uh, sometimes he, he's worn blue, or green, or white. Sometimes he's worn red, always fur trimmed. These days he nearly always wears red. Um, ever since that Coca Cola advert of the 1930s, that's what children expect. So Father Christmas wouldn't want to disappoint the children. For him, children always come first. So these days, more often than not, he's wearing the familiar red suit. You're probably thinking to yourself, what is an Anglican bishop doing, prosing on about Father Christmas at this time? I mean, surely for any bishop or priest, what Christmas is really about is not some old gentleman delivering presents. It's about God giving his son Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's not so much about flying reindeer as flying angels. So the story, the important story of Christmas, is that real historical fact 
of Jesus being born in Bethlehem, the Son of God. That's what's important. And of course you're completely right. And St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra, would have agreed wholeheartedly with that. See, the thing is, I think we've been rather unfair to Father Christmas. I mean, the way we use the image of him sometimes. Very often he's been turned into an advert. For commercial interests, he's been about encouraging people to buy and helping businesses to sell. But that really isn't what Father Christmas is about at all. Father Christmas is not about selling. He's about giving. Oh, children, there are an awful lot of fake Santas out there. Father Christmas is about giving. And I'm going to tell you now the real truth about Father Christmas. Father Christmas exists to remind us that we should be good and kind to one another because of the goodness and the kindness of God in giving us the most wonderful present of all time, Jesus. Father Christmas is there as a reminder to love one another because Jesus has loved us so much. That's what he's for. Now, if, you're, if you've grown up too much to understand that, too much for Father Christmas, if you're one of those people who no longer listens for sleigh bells off or the patter of tiny hooves, reindeer hooves upon your roof, well, I'm really sorry for you, especially at this time of year. But talk to the children, because children understand exactly what Christmas is all about. And they'll explain it to you. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to rush. You, you know what it's like this time of year. It gets terribly busy, so I've got to go. Happy Christmas, everybody, and God bless. Rudolph, have you been at the Sprouts again? <laughs>